we are standing right like this I would like the media team to project Psalms 91 Psalms 91 Psalms 91 and you can project it in New King James Version New King James Church, I would like us to read that psalm. Um, it's not a big um, chapter, but we shall read it together. We shall read it in English. Can we start? Let's go. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you because you are our hiding place. You are the hiding place of us as individuals. You are the hiding place of our families. You are the hiding place of our nation. You are the hiding place of the of the children of Israel. Yes, you are our hiding place. And this morning, as we go through your word, to remember how you are our hiding place, we pray that you may speak to us with a language that we can understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you believe it, shout amen. May you have your seats. This morning, I want to thank God because of the leadership of this church. Led by our bishop. Together with Mom Alice. Pastor Millicent and the pastoral team. I feel honored to stand before you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I know the Lord has got a word for each and every one of us. And I know he will speak and minister to us. We've just read Psalm 91. And because of time, I'll try to be very fast. And we have read many benefits 
of abiding in the presence of God. Na tumesoma faida nyingi sana za kukaa katika uwepo wa Bwana. Actually if you have a New King James version. Na sokuwa na tafsiri ya Farme The title of that chapter kichwa cha sura ile a safety of abiding in the presence of God. Ni usalama wa kuwepo katika uwepo wa Bwana. Safety of abiding in the presence of God. Usalama wa kukaa katika uwepo wa Bwana. This is not my topic. Hii sio kichwa changu cha ujumbe. That I'm going to discuss with us today. Ambalo nitanena nanyi sisi kuelewa. But I want to go through the 10 benefits of abiding in the presence of God. Ila nataka kupitia manufaa kumi yale ya kukaa katika uwepo wa Bwana. And if you are writing you better be fast. Na kama unaandika na kuomba ukue mwenekasi. The the first benefit of abiding in the secret place of the most high ya kukaa katika pahali pasiri pa aliye mkuu dwelling in the secret place of the most high kukaa katika pahali pasiri pa aliye mkuu and abiding under the shadow of the almighty na kukaa katika kivuli cha mwenye nguvu zote the first benefit is found in verse 3 msaa msanda wa kwanza tunapata katika aya ya tatu that surely he shall deliver you from the snare ni kwamba yeye atakuokoa katika mtego He shall deliver you from the snare. Atakuokoa kutokana na mitego. And I know as a believer. Na naamini kama muumini. There are so many snares that the enemy put ahead of us. Kuna mitego mingi sana adui anaweka mbele zetu. Because the enemy is not happy. Kwa sababu adui hajafurahia that we keep on professing Jesus Christ. Kwa sababu tunakaa tukikiri Yesu Kristo. And therefore he will gonna put a snare ahead of you. Kwa hivyo ataweka mtego mbele zetu. It would be maybe a snare in your family. Inaweza kuwa ni mtego katika jamii. It could be a snare in your place of work. Ama mtego katika pahali pako pa kazi. It could be a snare in whatever that you are doing. Inaweza kuwa mtego kwa lolote ufanyalo. It could be a snare that would make you compromise your faith. Ama mtego ambao utakufanya ufanye imani yako iwe hafifu. But the Bible says that if you dwell in the secret place of the most high. Kwa sababu ukikaa pahali pasiri pa aliye mkuu. It doesn't matter what kind of a snare the enemy will put across Jehovah will deliver you from that snare. And number two, he shall cover you with his feathers. He shall cover you. There is nothing as good as being covered by God. When the soldiers go to fight a battle, there are those who target the enemy and there are others who cover the people who are fighting na kuna wale wanafunikia wapiga nao praise the name of the lord and therefore as we keep on fighting the enemy kwa hivyo tunapozidi kupigana na adui since we are soldiers in the army of the lord na kwamba wewe ni mwanajeshi katika jeshi la bwana jehovah god will cover you jehovah atakufunika what does that mean inamaanisha nini that the enemy will not have an opportunity to attack you na shetani ama adui hatapata fursa ya kukufunika because god has covered you kwa sababu bwana amekufunikia the second thing is he will cover you The that benefit will be in verse 5 eh? that you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day you shall not be afraid you shall not be afraid when the economy goes bad you will not be afraid when you hear rumors of war Ukisikia kwamba kuna vita you will not be afraid hautakuwa na uoga you will not be afraid hautakuwa na uoga because you are dwelling in the secret place kwa sababu unakaa katika pahali pasiri and the fourth benefit is faida ya nne a thousand may fall at your side ni kwamba elfu wanaweza yanguka kwa upande wako and 10000 at your right hand na maelfu 10 kwa mkono wako wa kuume but it shall not come near you lakini haitakusongelea the fourth benefit the faida ene nothing bad shall come near you hakuna kitu kibaya kitakujieni when the enemy comes and falls at your right hand wakati adui anakuja katika mkono wako wa kuume or at the other side ama mkono wako na mlio mwingine there is no danger that will come near you wasitakuwa na hatari yoyote Because you are dwelling in the secret place of the most high. The fifth one, no evil shall befall you. Is found in verse 10. No evil shall befall you. No shall any plague come near your dwelling. No evil shall fall you. No evil shall befall you. There is nothing as 
better as being assured hakuna jambo mzuri kama kuhakikishiwa that as other people are suffering wakati wengine wanateseka as other people are going through a lot of hardships panapo watu wengine wapetia mangumu as a lot of evil is increasing no. in our nation wakati wofu unaongezeka katika taifa as a lot of evil is increasing on the face of the earth wakati maovu yanaongezeka katika ulimwengu there is no evil that will come near me hakuna wofu utakaokupata there is no evil that will come near my family utakuja kadimu na jamii and verse number 11 na mstari wake wa 11 it is the sixth benefit ni faida yake ya sita for he shall give his angels charge over you ni kwamba atawaamrisha malaika wake juu yako praise the name of the lord ana tukuzwe he shall give his angels charge over you kwamba atawaamrisha malaika wake juu yako brethren i want to say this this morning ndugu nataka kuwabieni asubuhi ya leo every time that you wake up Kila wakati unapoamka and, and, and as you do the things that you do every day unafanya shughuli zako za kila siku I want you to know there is an angel that is going by your side Nataka kuambia kwamba kuna malaika yako katika upande wako As you sleep unapolala there is an angel that is watching over you Kuna malaika naye kuangalia You will not have bad dreams Hautakuwa na ndoto mbaya The angels are keeping charge over your children. Malaika anaangaliani watoto wako. You do not have to get worried. Au na usipate hofu yoyote. Those parents who have youth wale wazazi wabao wana vijana mabarehe the angels of our covenant ni kwamba malaika wa agano they are keeping guard upon your youthful children ana wachunga mabarehe wako they will not get involved with other bad habits hataingia katika tabia zingine mbaya because the angels of god kwa sababu malaika wa mungu they are keeping guard over you wana wachungeni when you go When you go out and when you come in there are angels of God all over you This reminds me maybe I've said this years ago and I, and I was doing my business and I was busy traveling from one place to another one And I remember this time that the plane developed a problem We were actually flying from Kilimanjaro now to Dar es Salaam. Yenda Dar es Salaam tukitokea pale Kilimanjaro. And and, and and as the plane took off. Wakati ndege ilipopaa, we had a loud bang. Tukasikia sauti kuu. And behold on where I was seated next. Na pale mahali ilikuwa nimeketi hapo pale. Near the wing there was one engine. Kulikuwa na engine moja pale. And we saw some smoke and the engine stopped. Na tukaona moshi na alafu engine ikakazima. And behold there was silence in the plane. Na kukakuwa na kimya katika ile ndege. There was silence in the plane. Kukakuwa na kimya katika ndege. I think in my life up to day. Katika maisha yangu toka ile siku mpaka sasa. I've never experienced such a deafening silence like that time. Sijaisikia kimya kama kile. And I was seated next to my boss. Na nilikuwa nimekaa kando na mkubwa wangu. Because you know what happens if the engine of a plane shuts off unajua engine ya ndege ikizima nini kitatendeka and we are actually near the kilimanjaro mountain na tulikuwa karibu na mlima wa kilimanjaro so there are so many things that were coming across my mind vitu mingi zikakuwa katika kichwa changu and i thought could be this is my last time na nikafikiria huenda ikakuwa udi wakati wangu wa mwisho and uh, i was saying a prayer nikakuwa nafanya ombi and i saw many people in that plane they were praying na nikaona watu wengi katika ndege wakiomba my boss was sitting next to me kubwa wangu alikuwa amekaa kando nami and i had not had the opportunity of preaching to him or sharing the word siko nimepata fursa ya kumhubiria neno but this time i started praying and i started praying and i started praying loudly lakini nikaanza kuomba na nikaomba kwa sauti he looked at me and he looked down akaniangalia akatizama chini he looked at me then he looked down akaniangalia kisha akaangalia chini then he looked down kisha akaangalia chini and he started praying also akaanza pia yeye kuomba bwana asifiwe amen but one of the things that got assured of me lakini kitu moja nilihakikishiwa mimi is that i knew there are some angels that are watching over us nikajua kuna malaika wanaotuangalia and i knew that plane will not crash na nikajua ile ndege haitaaguka so for about half an hour the, the pilot was trying to circle around ile rubani akakuwa anazunguka and he managed to turn the plane again akaweza kuigeuza ndege and went back and landed na tukarudi pale na tukatua what happened to my boss na nini kilitendekea mkubwa instead of thanking god akaanza kumshukuru mungu he went straight to the bar and asked for a bottle of whiskey baada ya kumshukuru mungu alienda pale akachukua kileo but i had a moment to thank god lakini nikakuwa na fursa ya kumshukuru god will give his angels charge over you mungu atawaamrisha malaika wake wakulinde the seventh benefit afaida ya saba the young lion and serpent you shall trample at the foot 
ni kwamba siba mdogo pia na nyoka utawakanyagia Let me read verse 13. Wacha nisome mstari wa 13. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. Ni kwamba utawakanyangia simba pamoja na nyoka. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample under foot. Nyoka pamoja na siba mchanga utawakanyaga chini ya miguu. You know serpent is the form of the devil. Unajua nyoka ni aina ya shetani. When you abide in the presence of the Lord. Ukikaa katika uwepo wa Bwana. The devil will be under your foot. Shetani atakuwa chini ya miguu yako. Satan will be under your foot. Shetani atakuwa chini ya miguu yako. Amen. And number 8 Ah uh, faida ya nane. He sh- uh, the Bible says in verse 15. Biblia inasema katika mstari wa 15 that he shall call upon me ni kwamba atakaye niitia and I will answer him. Na nami nitamjibu. I'll be with him in trouble. Nitakuwa naye katika mashaka. I will deliver him and honor him. Nitamkomboa na kumheshimisha. The other benefit of abiding in the presence of God. Faida ingine ya kukaa katika uwepo wa Bwana is that God will answer you. Ni kwamba Mungu atakujibu. Is there something that you are believing God for? Je, kuna kitu unamwaminia Mungu? If you abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Unapokaa katika kifuli cha mwenye nguvu zote. God will answer you. Mungu atakujibu. And, va- and, and the benefit number 9. Na faida ya tisa, I will be with him in trouble. Nitakuwa pamoja naye katika shida. The troubles that you are having in this life. Matatizo unayo katika maisha haya. If you abide in the presence of God. Unapokaa katika uwepo wa Bwana. If you abide in the secret place of God. Na ukikaa katika pahali pasiri pake Mungu. Jehovah will be with you. Jehovah atakuwa nawe. He will see you in that trouble. Atakuona katika hali ile yako ya mashaka. And lastly number 10. Na hatimaye ile mwisho namba 10. With long life ni kwamba maisha marefu I will satisfy him nitamshibisha God will give you long life Mungu atakupa maisha marefu God will give you long life atakupa maisha marefu You don't have to be afraid church Oh fai kuwa na na hofu kabisa When you look around there are so many of us that have gone ahead of us Ukiangalia kuna watu wengi ambao wameenda mbele zetu sana But as for me lakini kwangu mimi But as for you lakini kwako wewe Jehovah will give you long life Yehova atakupa maisha marefu Bwana asifiwe Amen Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana atukuzwe. That was a small introduction. Ulikuwa na utangulizi mfupi. And I want to discuss about the topic on the shadow effect. Nataka kunena ujube kwa sababu kuhusu manufaa ya kivuli. The shadow effect. Ama manufaa ya kivuli. And the, my best scripture is Psalms 91, the one that you have read in verse number 1. Maana maandiko about tazingatia ni about tumesoma katika Zaburi 91. That he who dwells in the secret place of the most high katika pahali pasiri pahaliye juu shall abide under the shadow of the almighty atakaa katika kivuli cha mwenye nguvu shall abide under the shadow of the almighty atakaa kwenye kivuli cha aliye na nguvu do you know i was checking in the scriptures nikakuwa naangalia katika maandiko and i couldn't help also check the meanings of these words na nikaangalia maana ya maneno haya that verse number 1 ai mstari ule wa kwanza on dwelling he who dwells abaye akae the bible does not say he who stays a biblia isemi anaye ka pale it talks about dwelling he who dwells ni abaye anaishi pale dwelling means a uh, kuishi kuna maana living in a particular place ni kuishi katika pahali fulani living in a particular place kuishi katika pahala fulani or at a specified place ama mahali maalum When you come and visit me where I live, ukija kunitembelea mahali ninapoishi, and I stay with you probably a week or so, na nikaa naye kwa juma moja ama vile, and 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 then maybe you take a call, take your phone and call your name, your your your, your friends or call your your relatives na uchukue simu yako na uite mashemeji na marafiki zako to tell them that you are enjoying the stay that you are with the Kihato's house, waambie vile unavyofurahia vile unakaa kwa bwana Kihato. If I hear you telling whoever you are talking to that I am now dwelling in this place I will chase you out I will chase you out But you say that I'm staying here for some time I know that you are there for a few days and then you will take off and go to your place But when I read this scripture wakati nilisoma haya maandiko I started reflecting about my life nikaanza kuwaza kuhusu maisha yangu and asking God na nikauliza Mungu 
do I really dwell in your presence? naishi katika uwepo wako? Or do I stay in your presence? Ama nakaa katika uwepo wako? Do I dwell in your presence? Je, naishi katika uwepo wako? Or do I stay in your presence? Ama nakaa tu katika uwepo wako? And this is the question I would like you to ask yourself this morning. Are you staying in the presence of the Lord? Je, wewe unakaa ama wewe unaishi? If you stay that means you are not uh, at a specified place kama unakaa tu inamaanisha si mahali tu maalum palipotengwa you are here and there uko hapa na uko pale and that's why you find there are so many christians na ndio maana utaona kuna wakristo wengi they cannot live in one place hawezi ukaa mahali pamoja they cannot live in one church hawezi ishi katika kanisa moja they live from they move from one church to another one wanatoka kanisa moja hali lingine because they cannot be they don't have the capacity to dwell kwa sababu hawana ile uwezo wa kuishi they are staying wale wanakaa tu the bible says he who dwells ibe inasema aishie he who lives in a particular place ishi katika pahali maalum in the secret place katika pahali pasiri the secret place is translated as hiding place pahali pasiri pana tafsiriwa kama pahali pa maficho hiding place mafichoni the secret place pahali pasiri in psalms 91 verse 1 katika zaburi ya 91 verse 1 it is that hiding place ni pahali pale mafichoni i don't know whether you are dwelling in that hiding place of god kama unaishi katika pahali pale pa maficho and if you abide and you know in that hiding place na ukikaa pale ama ukiishi pale katika pahali pa maficho of the most high pa aliye juu then you shall abide kwa hivyo utadumu what is the meaning of the word abide je maana yake kudumu ni nini i looked at it and it says nikaangalia na ikasema hivi abide means accept kudumu inamaanisha or act in accordance with a rule ni kufanya mambo kulingana na sheria fulani or act in accordance with a decision ama kufanya kulingana na maamuzi act in accordance with a recommendation ama kufanya kulingana na maelezo so abiding in the secret place kwa hivyo kudumu katika pahali pasiri is accepting the rule of god ni kukumbali sheria za bwana it is accepting the decision of god ni kukubali maamuzi ya bwana it is accepting the recommendation of god na kukubali maelezo yake bwana you choose life or death unachagua maisha ama kifo but god says i we should choose life lakini bwana anasema heri ungechagua maisha praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe abiding in the presence of god hudumu katika uwepo wa bwana the bible also says continues to say biblia kisha inaendelea kusema that when you dwell in the secret place of the most high ukiishi katika pahali pasiri pa aliye juu you shall abide under the shadow of the almighty utadumu katika kivuli cha aliye na nguvu you shall abide under the shadow of the almighty utadumu chini ya kivuli cha aliye na nguvu i want to dwell a little bit on the shadow nataka nikae pale kidogo katika kivuli and that's why i have named my topic today the shadow effect na ndio maana kichwa cha ujubo wa leo ni manufaa ya kivuli because kwa sababu the shadow does whatever the object is doing kivuli kinafanya kila kitu ambacho kinafanywa na kitu kinachoikiwakilisha if i'm jumping ni kama kama ninaruka ruka my shadow is jumping kivuli changu utaona kinaruka ruka if i am walking na kama ninatembea my shadow is walking kivuli changu kinatembea if i am clapping kama napiga makofi my shadow is clapping kivuli changu kinapiga makofi pia I, it is not normal for the shadow to jump kivuli kuruka for my shadow to jump kivuli changu kiruke well i am studying huku mimi nimesimama praise the name of the lord bana sifiwe you know as we grew up unajua wakati kwa tunakuwa and as we were young wakati tulikuwa bado wachanga who how many of us were afraid of our shadows ni wangapi alikuwa anaogopa kivuli chao and especially when you went out in the full moonlight ana haso ukienda nje wakati kuna mwezi outside the house pale nje ya nyumba you are thinking that you are alone unafikiria uko peke yako then you look back lakini ukitazama nyuma you start seeing something else unaona kitu kingine tofauti i request the media nikawaomba wanahabari pale play what i requested them waweze kuchezea kile
Can we play the second one? Tu waje share hiyo hapi. This is a young boy. Kijana mdogo. He is walking alone. Tabia peke yake. Then he just found out that there is something that is working with him. Bonde akaona kuna kitu kinatembea naye. He see he is trying to run away. Anajaribu kutoweka. He is trying to to scare. Anajaribu kuihofisha. And please let me request you play the first one. Wacha nikombe urejere ile ya kwanza. Play the first one. Because if you look at this young girl, kiangalia huyu msichana mdogo. As they are preparing, anapojiandaa. I want to say this. Sema haya. Yes. Continue. You see this young girl she is so scared of the shando until actually she's falling she's trying to run away from the shando and what happens is that she fell down thank you very much i want to say this that if you dwell in the secret place of the most high you shall abide under the shadow of the almighty there are so many people kuna watu wengi who are running away from the shadow of god abao wanatorokea kivuli cha bwana from the divine protection of god kutokana na kulidwa kwa kiungo kwa mungu as we have seen girl, kana vile tumemwona msichana mdogo she is trying to run away anajaribu kutoroka from her shando kutokana na kivuli chake but what is happening lakini nini kinatadeka she lost control of Ana, herself anapotesa udhibiti wake and she fell down na anaaguka chini there are so many believers kuna waumini wengi sana who have gone or backslidden abao wameenda na wakarejea nyuma or who are fallen down ama wameanguka chini because of running away kwa sababu ya kutorokea from the shadow of god kutokana na kivuli cha bwana you can run away from god unaweza torokea bwana but you cannot hide lakini uwezi jificha you can run away from your shadow unaweza torokea kivuli chako even if you try to hide yourself in any place hata kama utajaribu kujificha kutoka sehemu yoyote your shadow will find you wherever you are kivuli chako kitakufuata mahali uko this is exactly what happens to our god hivyo divi inakuwa na mungu wewe if you abide under his shadow ukindumu katika kivuli chake he will always be with you atakuwa pamoja nawe kila wakati now i went to the dictionary nikaenda katika kamusi to look for the definition of the word shadow niangalia maana ya jina kivuli and uh, in the oxford dictionary na katika <coughs> dictionary kama usi ile ya oxford i found out that the word shadow nikaona neno kivuli is defined in two ways imeelezwa kwa jinsi mbili one as a noun ya kwanza kama kitu cha kutaja and number two as a verb na ya pili kama kitu cha kutenda those who teach english ambao ni wakufunzi wa kiingereza they will tell you that a noun is a word that names something watakwambia kwamba noun ni kitu ambacho kinaeleza kitu and a verb is an action word a verb ni kitu cha kutenda in the oxford dictionary katika kamusi ile um, the word shando in in the noun form neno kivuli katika maana yake ya kumaanisha kitu it is a dark area or shape ni mahali ambapo panagiza giza produced by a body coming between rays of light and surface inaosababishwa na kitu kusimama baina ya miare ya mwagaza let me repeat it wacha nirejelee as a noun kama neno la kutaja a dark area of shape produced by a body coming ya, between rays of light and surface ni sehemu ya giza giza ama umbo ambayo inafasababishwa na kitu kusimama baina ya miare ya jua That means the shadow is an outline 
inamaanisha kwamba kile kivuli ni kama maelezo tu it is shape ina umbo it is a contour ni kitu ambacho kinaonekana kinyume cha mtu it is a profile na ni kitu kama wasifu the dark figure cast upon a surface by a body intercepting the rays from a source of light ile hali ya giza giza ama ubo inasababishwa na kitu kusimama baina ya miale ya jua and therefore going back to Psalms 1 and verse 1 na kwa hivyo tukirejea zaburi ya 91 mstari wa 5 abiding under the shadow of the almighty kudumu katika kivuli cha aliye nguvu it means that we are abiding in god's outline inamaanisha kwamba tumesimama katika ile miale ya bwana it means that we are abiding or we are abiding under the profile of god akudumu katika wasifu wa mungu we are abiding in the contour of god ama tunasimama pale katika kiwili ama sehemu ya mungu we are abiding in the shape of god na tunakaa katika umbo la mungu praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe the second meaning maana yake ya pili as as um, indicated as a noun ambayo inaelekezwa kama ku it is used in reference to proximity inahusi ama inatumika ka ikihusishwa na ubali baina it is used in reference to, pro, to proximity ama inatumika ikielezea ukaribu wa kitu na kingine for example kwa mfano you know the shadow is a proof that the object is near kwamba kivuli ni hakikisho kwamba kuna kitu when you see a shadow ukiona kivuli you know that the owner of the shadow is not very far off unajua mwenye kivuli kile hayuko mbali Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. And therefore dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. Na kwa hivyo kuishi kama katika kivuli cha aliye na nguvu. It means you are dwelling in close proximity to God Jehovah. Maanisha unaishi kwa ukaribu hivi sana na Yehova. God is near you. Mungu yuko karibu nawe. Jeremiah 23 verse 23. Jeremiah 23 mstari wa 3. Bible says I am a God who is near. Bibi inasema mimi ni Mungu aliye karibu declares the Lord atangaza bwana and not a god far off na si Mungu aliye bali and david said in psalms 73 and verse 28 ndio maana daudi akasema katika zaburi ya 73 but for me it is good to be near god kwamba mimi ni heri ni kuwa karibu na Mungu as for me it is good to be near god na kwa gu mimi ni heri kuwa karibu na bwana i have made the lord god my refuge nimemfanyia kufanyia mungu kuwa kibilio langu that i may tell all of your works na ili niweze kusema kuhusu kazi zake zote that means dwelling under the shadow of the almighty na kwa hivyo kuishi katika uvuli wa aliye na nguvu you are in close proximity to jehovah uko na ukaribu sana na jehovah and the other definition meaning the verb na maana hiyo ingine ya hali ya kutenda which is an action word ambao ni jambo la kutenda It means to cast a shadow. Inamaanisha ni kuweka kivuli. To cast a shadow. Ni kuweka kivuli. To cast a shadow. Ni kuweka kivuli. For example, kwa mfano, we in this campus we have Cornerstone Academy. Kama uh, kama hapa tunao shule ya Cornerstone and there is the building where the classes are. Na kuna lile jengo mahali madarasa yapo. And if you are coming from up na kama una, road, kitoka sehemu ya juu ya barabara ya Dikaro and as you look down na ukitizama kule chini what do you see je unaona nini do you see the cornerstone academy building or do you see the church building unaona kanisa ama jengo la cornerstone what do you see the church building unaona kanisa even as you are walking from cooperative ukitembea ukitoka pale kwa benki ya cooperative or even if you are at Shiloh ama umekuwa pale Shiloh when you look down Yangalia kule chini. You do not see Cornerstone Academy building. Uone shule ya Cornerstone. You see the church building. Utaona jengo la kanisa. That means ina maanisha the DCIKZ church building kwamba jengo hili la kanisa la ukobozi has shadowed Cornerstone Academy building. Ni kama limesitiri ile shule ya Cornerstone. That is the literal meaning. Hiyo ndio ina maanisha and God 
na Mungu he is shadowing you ni kwamba amekufunika amekusitiri it means wherever you are nina maanisha pahali popote uwepo when people look at you wakati watu wanakutizama they will not see you hawata kuona wewe they will see jehovah watamuona jehovah they will see god watamuona Mungu in the same manner you do not see the cornerstone academy classes kwa hali ile ile hautaona madarasa ya cornerstone because they are being shadowed by the church building kwa sababu yamefunikiwa na jengo la kanisa the church building is bigger than the academy hii jengo la kanisa ni kubwa kuliko shule yenyewe since our god is big kwa sababu Mungu wetu ni mkuu people will not be able to see you watu wasipata kutuona sisi but they will see god ila tu watamuona Mungu The Bible says in John 3 and verse 30. Biblia inasema Yohana 3:30 that he must increase. Baba yeye shati ataongezeka but I must decrease. Na mimi nipungue. And this is the prayer this morning. Na hili ndilo obi asubuhi ya leo. That let God increase in your life. Baba waacha Mungu aongezeke katika maisha yako. And less and less of me. Na sisi tupungue. I am praying that God may increase in my life. Naomba Mungu akakuwe mkuu katika maisha yangu. And less and less of me. Na mimi nipzindi kupungua. David also said in Psalm 17 and verse 8. Zaburi 17 Daudi pia akasema. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Ni kwamba unuweke katika kama boni la jicho lako. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Unifiche katika kivuli cha mabawa yako. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Niweke mimi kama boni la jicho lako. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Unifiche katika kivuli cha mabawa yako. Do you know you, it is very hard? Je, wajua ni vigumu sana? To box someone's apple ili uweze kuguza boni la jicho ya mtu because as you go close the person maana jicho la yule mtu there is a natural reflex kuna sehemu ya kiasiria ama tendo la kiasiria that the eye will close automatically kwa lile jicho litafunga tu hivi kiautomatic it will close faster than the way you are trying to hit ile jicho litafunga kwa haraka ama upesi kuliko venye unajaribu kudunga and this is exactly what god is telling us this morning sawa sawa vile bwana anavyotuambia subiria leo that whatever is trying to attack you baba rorota baba ninakulenga jehova will shut you up before you get uh, you, you get attacked baba bwana atakufunikia kabla uguzwe before that thing that was meant for evil attacks you you will be enveloped by god and whatever was meant to attack you will not praise the name of the lord as a verb the other meaning is envelop in shadow envelop in shadow Well, if you have something precious kama una kitu cha dhamana and you want to give somebody na unataka kumtunikia mtu especially birthday gifts aswa zawadi ya siku yako ya kuzaliwa you usually wrap them isn't it wewe unaifunika vizuri you do not just give gifts like that au ipatiani moja kwa moja vile or you can put it in an envelope ama unaweza iweka ndani ya pasha you do not want other people to see sababu utaki watu wengine walione except the person you are gifting ila tu ule mtu ambao unamtunikia Now if you go to a bank and you go to withdraw money na unaenda kutoa pesa you go withdraw 5000 shillings natoa 5000 zako tano pale kwa kaunta or maybe let me put it this way ama niweke hivi <laughs> when you go to an atm ukienda pale katika mashini ya atm and uh, people are withdrawing money from the atm na watu wanatoa pesa pale and people are queuing na watu wanapanga foreni the person who is next to the mtu ambaye anakaribia ile mashini would hear the sound of whoever is whatever the somebody is doing in that particular booth atasikia kitu ambacho yule mtu anafanya pale sehemu ya nyuma and no at times wakati mwingine it produces a short sound na zingine inatoa sauti ghafla inatoa tu sauti ghafla and then you know that person maybe has has withdrawn maybe 3000 2000 unajua yule mtu kulingana na kasi ya ile sauti But there are some other people who are withdrawing money. Lakini kuna watu wengine wanatoa pesa. And and it produces sound. Na ile inatoa sauti. Kwa wakati mrefu. And then it breathes out. Alafu inatoa. And continues. Na inaendelea pia. And it continues. Maybe he's withdrawing 40,000, 50,000 shillings. Labda anatoa 1,500 ama 40. By the sound it is producing. Kulingana na ile sauti ambayo inatoa. You can know how much it is. Utajua kiasi chake. But 
you know, for the purposes of my topic here, on enveloping in a shando, when you go and withdraw 5,000 shillings from the teller, from the counter, that person will give you that money. But if you go and withdraw a million shillings, and they keep on counting and counting and counting, and that million is there, as they give you that million, you don't ask them for an envelope. But they go under and they produce an envelope and they give it to you. So it is up to you whether to use that envelope or not. You envelope something that is valuable. The value of one million is different from the value of five thousand shillings. And God is saying since you are valuable, he will envelope you in his shadow. Praise the name of the Lord. He will envelope you. The other final meaning or definition as a verb of the word shando and this is in the Oxford Dictionary it is to follow and observe someone closely and secretly follow and observe someone closely and secretly the dictionary gave an example that he had been up all night shadowing a team of poachers. He has been you know, up all night shadowing a team of poachers. We may not be able to understand about poachers. Let me bring it close home. The police. We understand the police. The police has been all night shadowing a den of robbers. That means police did not sleep. They were secretly observing the robbers that have been terrorizing the people of Zimmerman. They have been following them secretly. And the meaning of the shandu, I found it to be very good here. That Jehovah God, he will secretly follow you, observing every move that you make. But why? That he may provide and protect you. He will provide and protect you. You know, sometimes you do things and, and things just happen and you start wondering, how did it happen like this? How did I manage to move from point A to point B? It is the shadow of God. Sometimes you look back at your life and you say, but God. And you say, but God. It means the shadow of God. It means God has been secretly following you. Observing every move that you make. Taking care of you of every step that you take. Seeing the needs that you have. And providing for you without your knowledge. This morning, if I may ask you, who woke you up from your bed? Who woke you up from your bed? You were dead asleep. But all of a sudden you woke up. But indeed there are some people who never woke up. 
they, are, they woke up in the other side of eternity. But you woke up. It is God that woke you up. You may think it is natural to wake up. But it is God who woke you up. Praise the name of the Lord. As I wider, I'll be very fast to to, to discuss with us about the types of shandu. Types of shandu. And I kindly request the media team to project that image as I wind up. Types of shandu. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So in all the dwelling, in all the secret place, in all the binding, it's done only under the shadow of the Almighty. It is done under the shadow of the Almighty. And there are different types of shando. And I think this we learned in the upper primary. So I would like to remind you about this, what you can see on the, on the screen. There is this one, as you project this one, Kaidre be looking for the other one, which has three of them. These are the types of shando. The first type of shando is the ubra, the darkest part that you see. And the other one is called penumbra. There is a third type of shando that they shall bring if they get that image. It is called Ant Ubra. Exactly, this is the one, Ant Umbra. So, we have three types of shando. We have the Umbra, which is the darkest. We have Penumbra, which is less dark. Penumbra, ida ya katikati. And then we have Aunt Ubra, which is very light. Let it stay like that. As I do the explanation. The Aunt Ubra is the lighter part of the shando. That forms at a certain distance from the object casting the shando. Penumbra According to the definition, it is the region in which only a portion of, of the light source is obscured by the body. And the ubra, it is the innermost and darkest part of a shadow. Where the light source is completely blocked by the body. Now, in the Aunt Ubra, Aunt Ubra, it is like a believer who is positioned in the periphery. He is not inside at all. You know, there are those kind of people who do not want to be recognized. They come to church secretly and then they quickly go out. And they say, me, I am saved, but I don't talk, I don't say it. You, 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 read, you read my actions, I don't testify that I'm saved. And they have a problem with the people who keep on saying, praise the Lord, I am born again. Yes, they live right, or oh, they try to, re, to live right, but they are in the obscurity of the shadow of God. In fact, if you look at them, though they read Psalms 91 and verse 1 and and declare it over their lives. You do not really, you cannot differentiate between him or them and the people of the world. 
This is a person living under that shadow. Ni mtu katika katika ile hali ya kivuli kile. This is to say church. Ni kusema kanisa. Yes, all of us are living under the shadow of the Almighty. Sisi wote tuko chini ya kivuli cha aliye na nguvu. But our shadows are different. Lakini vivuli zetu ni tofauti. Our shadows may not be the same. Wenda kivuli chako na chako. Then we have the, those that are living not very far away but their lives are not straight. Lakini kuna wengine wanaishi sio mbali sana, lakini they, maisha yao sio sawa. They are living in the penumbra. Wao wanaishi katika ile sehemu tumeita penumbra. They are living in the penumbra. Wanaishi katika sehemu ya penumbra. They have a form of godliness. Wako na mfano wa uungu. They are coming to church. Wao wanakuja kanisa. They are declaring they are living under the shadow of the Almighty. Na wanakiri wako chini ya uvuri wa Bwana. They have a form of the shadow of God. Na wana sehemu ama umbo la kivuli cha Bwana. But that shadow is But, not very clear. Lakini kile kivuli hakionekani vizuri. That shadow is not very sharp. Na hionekani kwa ufasaha sana. It is very blurred. Inaonekana kiwiliwili tu. Yet they are living under the shadow. Ila wanaishi chini ya kivuli. But their shadow is not sharp. Lakini kivuli chao hakionekani vizuri. But we have others. Lakini tunao wengine who are living in the ubra shadow of God. Ambao wanaishi katika sehemu ya ubra ya kivuli. Because they have positioned themselves. Ni kwa sababu wamejiweka right in the pathway of the presence of God. Pale katika sehemu ya kupita kwa uwepo wa Bwana. It is very important ni na manufaa sana the position you are at in Christ sehemu ambao umeichukua katika Kristo because the position you are at in Christ kwa sababu sehemu uliyoka nako ndani ya Kristo determines what kind of a shadow that is on you inazingatia sana ni kivuli gani utakuwa chini mwake so if you position yourself kwa hivyo ukijiweka right in the proximity of the presence of God katika ukaribu sana wa uwepo wa Mungu you are in the umbra uko katika kivuli cha umbra in the umbra um, image not image in the umbra shadow, shadow of god uko katika kivuli cha umbra cha mungu and let me tell you church na wacha niwaambieni kanisa i know my time is up najua wakati wangu umeondoka but let me tell you lakini wacha niwaambie those that are living in the umbra shadow of god ambao wanaishi katika kivuli cha umbra cha mungu you can tell Unaweza ukaona their lives are different. Maisha yao ni tofauti. They do miracles for God. Wanafanya miujiza kwa They do mungu. wonders of, for God. Nawafanya miujiza kwa sababu ya Mungu. They don't struggle to do many things. Na hawangangani kufanya vitu vingi. Because they are living in the umbra shadow of God. Kwa sababu wanaishi katika kivuli cha umbra cha Mungu. Jehovah will speak to them. Jehovah atawanenea and they will know the times they are living in. Na watajua majira wanayoishi. They will touch the sick and they will recover. Watawaguza ambao ni wagonjwa na watapona. And they will pray for those you know that are blind and they shall recover. Na watawaambia vipofu na wataona. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. One person like that. Mmoja kama huyo. Is found in the book of Acts chapter 5. Anapatikana katika matendo ya mitume sura ya 5. And that is Peter. Na jina lake ni Petero. In the early days of the church. Katika siku za kwanza kwanza za kanisa. It was a time of phenomenal growth. Ilikuwa ni wakati wa kukua kwa hali ya juu sana. So many apostolic miracles. Kulikuwa na miujiza mingi ya kiapostoliki inafanyika. But Peter lived in the umbra shadow of God. Lakini Petero akaishi katika kivuli chile cha umbra cha Mungu. Yes, he was with the other apostles. Alikuwa kweli na wanafunzi wengine wa Yesu. But for him he positioned himself. Lakini yeye alijiweka katika sehemu maalum. To the extent in verse 12 to, to verse 16. Kwa ubali hivi kwa katika mstari wa a lot of people brought the sick watu wengi wakawaleteni watu ambao ni wagonjwa but watch and look at peter's shadow lakini tizama uone kivuli chake petero that many believed baba wengi waliamini if they lay the sick on the street wakiweka wale wagonjwa jiani and as peter is passing by na pia petero anapopita and his shadow touches one of them na kivuli chake kimuguza mmoja wao they will get healed watapona Peter had the ubra shadow of God. Petero akawa na kivuli cha aina ya ubra cha Mungu. And it was extending to the to, the, to his world. Na ndaka kuwa inaelekea ulimwenguni mwake. And this is what God is calling us to. Na hivi ndivyo Bwana anatuitieni. But let me tell you this. Lakini wacha niwaambieni hiki. I don't want to have a doctrine on the shadow. Sitaki kuwa na, na dini kuhusiana na kivuli. Because Peter never prayed for the sick to recover using his shadow. Sababu Petero hakuomba kwamba kivuli chake kiwaponye wagonjwa. I want you to read 
carefully that chap- Acts chapter 5. Nataka usome vizuri matendo ya mitume 5. Peter did not pray for the sick using his shadow. Petero hakuombea wagonjwa kupitia kivuli chake. Peter was doing about his business. Alikuwa anashughulika biashara zake. But the people who were needed. Lakini watu waliokuwa na mahitaji. They told themselves. Wakajiambia. This mighty man of God. Huyu mtu mkuu wa Mungu. Moving with mighty power. Akitembea kwa nguvu kuu. Doing kuhu. many miracles. Akifanya miujiza mingi. If you bring the sick and lay them on the street. Kiwaleta wagonjwa pale mapitoni. And as the shadow is passing by. Na kivuli chake anapopita. Perhaps uh, the sickness will disappear. Huenda maradhi yatatoweka. And truly the Bible says in Na, verse 16. Kwa hakika Biblia inasema katika mstari wa 16. Of Acts chapter 5. Katika matendo ya mitume 5. So a multitude gathered from surrounding cities to, to Jerusalem. Kwa maana wengi makutano wengi wakakusanyika pa Yerusalemu. Bringing sick people and those who are tormented by unclean spirits. Wakiwaleta wagonjwa ambao walikandamizwa na roho chafu. And they were all healed. Na wote wakaponywa. And they were all healed. Na wote wakaponywa. Church if you live in the ubra shadow of God. Kanisa ukiishi katika kivuli cha aina ya ubra cha Mungu. If you live in the ubra shadow of God. Ukikaa katika kivuli cha umbra za Mungu, you do not have to declare many things. Sile sharti utangaze mambo mengi. You just position yourself. Ila tu utajiweka kwa sehemu fulani. In that ubra position shadow of God. Katika kivuli chile cha ubra cha Mungu. The people surrounding you. Na watu ambao wanakuzunguka. They will automatically get healed Sometimes you don't have to pray for them Wakati mwingine si lazima uombe In your office people will look at you Katika ofisi yako watu watakufisa You don't have to tell people that you are born again They look at you and they see the power of God in you Watakutizama na wataona nguvu za Mungu ndani mwako Because you are living in the umbra shadow of God Kwa sababu unakaa katika kivuli cha umbra cha Mungu And I want all of us to rise up to our feet this morning Na nijaritaka sisi wote tusimame katika miguu yetu I don't know whether you are desiring to live in the umbra shadow of God Sijui kama unatazamia kuishi katika kivuli cha umbra cha Mungu. You know we have read that he who dwells in the shell he who dwells in the secret place of the most high God. Kwa kwamba tumesoma kwamba atakaye dumu katika pahali pasiri za Mungu. Shall bind under the shadow of the Almighty. Atadumu katika kivuli cha aliye na nguvu. There are some people who are dwelling right in the ubra shadow of God. Kuna watu wako katika kivuli cha ubra kile cha Mungu. I don't know whether you are dwelling in the pen ubra shadow of God. Ama katika katika sehemu ya peni umbra. I don't know whether you are dwelling in the ant ubra shadow of God. Ama sehemu ya kivuli ya mwicho ya peni ya ant ubra. I would like you to lift up your hands and cry to God. Nijaritaka uinue sauti yako umlilie Bwana. That God may help me and you. Kwamba Mungu atakusaidia wewe na live in the ubra shando ili tuishi katika kivuli cha umbra so that signs and wonders will follow you ili ishara na miujiza ikatua dame signs and wonders will follow you kwamba ishara na miujiza zikatua dame signs and wonders will follow you ishara na miujiza zikua dame you don't have to struggle so much in prayer sio lazima ungangane sana katika because you have positioned yourself kwa sababu umejiweka hivi kwamba in the secret place of the most high katika pali pasiri pali ya juu a binding under the shando of the almighty that shando should be the umbra shando of god Those that are in the penumbra shando I call on you to move to the umbra position That position so that the, the shadow of God That brings about power shall be cast over you In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus And for there to be a shando na ili pale paonekana kivuli there must be the source lazima kutakuwa na chanzo the source of light chanzo cha mwanga and the source of light is god na wachanzo cha mwanga ni bwana genesis 1:1 mwanzo moja moja in the beginning god pale mwanzo mungu in the beginning god pale mwanzo mungu in the beginning god pale mwanzo mungu where is your beginning je mwanzo wako huu wapi is your beginning god this morning je mwanzo wako ni mungu asubuhi ya leo is the beginning god this morning je God is the source of light. Mungu ndio chanzo cha God is the source of light. Na yeye ndio chanzo cha mwangaza. And the second thing for there to be a shadow. Na jambo la pili pa kuwekwa 
must be light. There must be light. The word of God is the light. Psalms 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet. A light on my path. Is the word of God a light to your feet this morning? Is the word of God a light to your feet this morning? Is the word of God a lamp to your feet this morning? And the third thing is that there must be an object where the light will come and hit. And that object is me and you. That object is me and you. And I'm calling upon all of us this morning and as many as can hear me to position themselves in the pathway of the light of the word of God. In the pathway of the light of God so that God can be illuminated into your life. Because for God to have an effect to this earth for the word of God to be effective in this world the word must first of all come through you. The word must be through you so that his shadow can be cast on the surface of the earth. The problem and the challenges we have very few people that are living in the umbra shadow of God. And in this earth we have so many people that are living in the and Ubra and the Penumbra Shandos. And they are getting lost. I'm calling upon you this morning to be part of the few people. The Bible says that the harvest is so big but the laborers are few. The laborers are few. Those that are living in the Umbra Shando are few. Yet there are so many people who are dying. There is a clarion call there is a clarion call of God this morning to wake up position yourself so that when the word of God is coming across it will fight somebody and once it is finds you you'll be willing and ready to affect your world with the umbra shadow of God praise the name of the Lord and I would like to call the ministry team and they will help me to pray very quickly. If you are here this morning and you like to have the Ubra shadow of God, there is somebody to pray with you. You've been living for too long in the Penubra shadow. No wonder your Christian life has been lukewarm. You do not have any strength to start before people. Whenever you are asked to pray, you get confused. When you are called upon to go to a mission you do not want, you feel intimidated. You need to realign your position this morning so that God can start using you. I would like you to start coming in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And those people that are not born again and you like this morning to start living under the shadow of the Almighty. I also call upon you to come to the ministry team and they will pray with you. They will pray with you and dedicate your life again to the Lord. Those that have backslidden, they have ran away because of the shadow effect in 
in their lives. Like Jonah, he ran away from the presence of God. Yet God found him in that place that he thought he was hiding. You may think that you are hiding yourself. You who had seen the light initially. God is calling you back to himself. Don't run away from his presence. Don't run away from the shadow of God. You will never hide yourself from the presence of God. God is calling you back. God is calling you back. And those that are studying, I would like all of us to lift up our hands. Please lift up your hands. Don't become a spectator this morning. And position yourself in the umbra position of God. That God can use you. That God can use you. If God used the early disciples, if God used the early apostles, indeed he can use you. God can use you. He used Apostle Peter. Even his shadow could heal the sick. He can use you. He can use you. He can use you. He can use you. He will use you. Position yourself. Dwell in the secret place. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And you shall abide under that shadow. You shall abide under that shadow. The shadow of the Almighty. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Keep on calling upon God. Keep on calling upon God. Position yourself to receive from Him. Position yourself to be in the umbra. The umbra shadow of God. Ah. And he's gonna use you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. can use anything then he can use me if God can use anything in these early times then he can use you then he can use you position yourself that God can use you position yourself that God can use you amen Come on.